Um, my name is Alexa. I am a senior biology and German major at Case Western Reserve University in Cleveland, Ohio. And I just wanted to make a little video kind of about how I studied for the MCAT and how I got a good score. So I apologize if the sound quality is not great. But yeah. So like I said, I'm a senior. I took the MCAT in, on July 20th uh, last summer, so the summer between my junior and senior years. Uh, I didn't take it earlier because I'm taking a gap year, so if you were wondering. Um, so yeah, I ended up scoring a 522, which I was very excited about. Um, it's the 99th percentile. Honestly, I can't describe how excited I was about it. I did study a lot over the summer, so I thought I'd share how I how I got the score. I know not the same thing works for everybody, but this is just what I did to study. Um, so yeah, let's, I'll start at the beginning, I guess. So I planned on starting to study in early April, um, which like I said, I just tested on July 20th. So it's a few months in advance. Um, all that I actually ended up doing was I took the next step half-length diagnostic exam is the first thing that I did. Um, and I, I was trying to find my score. I can't remember what I got. I think it was a 502, maybe a 504 on the diagnostic, which I was very happy with considering that was kind of my starting base level. Um, and when I did that, the next thing I did was kind of looking at percentiles and knowing myself, I tried to set a goal for myself of what I would like to score. Cause I feel like I work better if I have something I'm aiming for in practice exams. So the goal I set was 515 and I knew if I got that I'd be really happy and I'd be in a really good place to apply. So the next thing that I did was I tried to make a study plan for myself. I made my schedule, I did not stick to my schedule, namely because I did not study in April and May while I was still in classes, which I think it is definitely hard to plan to study while in classes. The next thing I did was I ordered books. I had seen a lot of different things online about which books you should get. Um, some people saying in the forums like, oh, you know, you should get Princeton Review for this subject. You should do this other thing for this other subject. Um, but then I'd also heard that in the end, all, if you're getting one of the big name books, they're all good. It doesn't make that much of a difference. Um, there's not a magic formula to get a perfect score by having the right books. So I ended up going with Kaplan just because they were they were still expensive, but they were cheaper than some of the other big ones like Next Step or Exam Crackers, and they're a big name, so I thought it'd be something good to go with. I have my whole um, set right here. So um, back to kind of the beginning, I guess. So after I made my schedule that I did not stick to, um, the only thing I actually did do while still in April was I read this book, The Official Guide to the MCAT from the AAMC. I had heard that, you know, this is from the AAMC, they're the ones who administer the test, so, or they design the test, um, so it's good to kind of read about the exam from what they say. It goes over really basic stuff, like how to register, what the exam is really like, how they score, and then there also are um, a bunch of practice passages and problems, which I did not do those when I first read this, I just read it and I saved the problems for later. And I did end up doing them in my last week of studying just for some extra practice. Um, the other thing that I started using well before April of last year was a podcast. Uh, it's called the MCAT Podcast by, uh, I believe, MedEd Media Network. And it is in association with Next Step Test Prep. Um, I started listening to that. I couldn't say exactly when, but I would listen to it. I do research in a lab here and um, I would listen to that when doing some of the more tedious tasks to pass the time. And in the first many episodes, they go over more of the logistics, a lot of the stuff that you would read in this book. I had already heard there about what testing is like, um, how many practice exams, which books you should buy, all things like that. And then later on, they do a lot of practice passages where they'll read passages on the podcast. They'll go through questions. They have people and they really explain the answers and I thought that was really helpful because um, I, like I said, I stayed here in Cleveland all summer, did research full time and I listened to that a lot. I ended up getting through every single episode of the podcast um, by the time my test date came up. When I would actually go through the Kaplan books, 
um, I would, I had, I don't have the highlighters with me, but I had a different highlighter color for each book. I just thought that was kind of fun. Um, so, and um, I would take notes with a pencil and I would highlight. So for example, this is the biology book. Um, and I found a, a good page where I took a lot of notes. Um, sometimes I didn't take a lot of notes. I love biology, it's my major. So it was more fun for me to take notes here than in maybe Gen Chem. But you know, I try to, so I'll just show. I highlight, maybe star things that they would say on the side that are important. I would draw out concepts. Um, these are like the immune responses, just things that help to draw out. It definitely helps when you can draw out a concept or rewrite things in your own way. Um, that definitely helps to make it more of an active process than just blindly reading and highlighting important sentences. So I guess that kind of brings me to flashcards and how I learned the content. Um, by the time I was studying for this, I had already taken all of the prereq classes, so all of the physics, gen chem, o -chem biology. Um, so I did have a foundation and the books definitely helped me review everything and bring a lot of it back. So I didn't feel that I needed to like sit down and learn everything because it was more of just re bringing it back. Um, but definitely for more of the things you had to memorize, I would use flashcards kind of selectively for certain things. So for the physics equations and some of the general chemistry equations that were important, I made a, a quizlet that wasn't even that many cards, I don't think, just to memorize all the important ones um, by test day. And I, I tried to make that I started making the flashcards maybe a month before and tried to, maybe even earlier for some of them, and tried to learn them as I was going slowly. A big one um, is the amino acids. I already had flashcards made for that from classes I've taken where you've had to memorize those, but I went through those all the time because if there's one thing people will tell you, it's that you have to know the amino acids for the MCAT. Their properties, the structure, their abbreviations, just make sure you know them. If you know one thing, memorize those. I finished the books completely um, a week and a half before my test date, which was not ideal, would not recommend that. I would really should have reevaluated my schedule a lot more sooner um, to realize that practice, I think, is the most important thing. Obviously, content review is a big deal and is necessary, but a lot of people would say that practice problems are really where you're going to get the help from. I guess the main other thing that I did was um, practice exams. So yeah, I took five total practice exams. Um, the first one was the free next step full length exam because uh, I didn't want to pay for another one. Um, and then the other four were all the AAMC exams. And that is another thing that I've heard is that some people will say that if you do not take those four AAMC exams, you are not ready to take the MCAT. That's what some people say just because those exams are made by the AMC. They are the absolute closest to what you'll see on test day. So you're really doing yourself a disservice if you don't take those four exams and thoroughly review them as well. My number one recommendation I think would be take practice exams. I took five total. I would do more if you had time and really go over them. Yeah, so the exams I would take them like a exam I would go and I would bring my lunch and my snacks, my water, sit down. I would, you know, log in, get my scratch paper, my pencil, turn off my phone just like I would for the exam, the real day, and I would test. And I have here like so for each one I would use scratch paper. So usually for chem phys, which is the first section, I would take a decent number of notes because you're doing scratch work and I would usually write down how much time I had left at the end just so I could keep track of that. So here I had 30 seconds left and I made a note that I ran out of time. Um, it's just good to know and I, I could track over time. Like typically I would have a little more time on this section but in this case I ran out. And for cars, um, I had my own page of notes because I um, did an outline when I did cars. There's a lot of different ways to do cars. That's just how I did it. Um, so I would write paragraphs and just really brief what it was kind of about. If I'd had more time, I might have tried around more other methods with cars to see what worked best, but that's what I did and it worked for me. It was usually tight on time for cars. That was definitely my tightest section. So then after the exam was over, um, I would 
go home, you know, relax the rest of the day. Uh, it's a lot to take a full exam. Uh, you know, I'd look at my score, obviously. And then I would try to do it the following Sunday, the next day. Um, but sometimes it kind of got pushed a little bit because I would also be doing more um, book review then too. But I would make sure to go through the exam. That's another thing. You have to go through your exams to see what you missed, if there was anything you guessed right, because that's still a concept you don't know, but you, even though you guessed it right, you still need to know that concept. So I would go through each question. I wouldn't spend super long, but even if it was right or wrong, I'd read the explana little explanations they'd give um, to see, and I would try to remember. That's The sooner you can do it, the better, because you can kind of remember, did I know this? Did I not know this? And it's good to see. So I would make one page like this for each exam where I would write my subsection score, uh, how many I got right total. I would go through each passage in discrete set and write down like how many I got right, mainly to see if there's any passages that I completely missed a lot on because that's for me was something I really tried that I didn't want to miss more than one, more than one question on a passage and I'd kind of write notes like that's not good don't do that next time or like good job if I got a lot where I didn't miss many on passages and then I would also make a short list of concepts that I missed stuff on um I didn't reference these back very much but I did write them down and I would do that for each of the four sections and then for another thing with concepts that I missed if they were big concepts versus just little things that I knew came up a lot and that I would miss questions on I would write them on this big page it's front, it ended up being front and back, but I wrote on this the entire time, um, starting with my first exam all the way through the last. Um, and I would write a concept. If it came up on the next exam that I missed it again, I would star it. Um, so this came in handy for sure in the last week and a half when I was trying to review just a few concepts that I thought um, would be worthwhile. So yeah, that's how I went through exams. So then I will get into my final week. A week and a half of once I finished the books what I did to study so the final resource that I used was all of the AAMC online problems so you can buy a pack I think it was about $300 which is a lot but I thought it would be worth it which includes all of their online exams and then they also have different question banks I ended up going through some of the section bank which is more current and has questions from all of the from Bio, Bio, Chem, Chem, Phys, and Psych, so should not from CARS. And then they also have CARS Q packs. So going into test day that last week, I was worried about CARS and Psych, so. So I did a lot. I sat in the library instead of doing my books. I did CARS questions. There were, I did some where I didn't time myself and really took my time to try to get the answers right. And then I did others where I tried to get through them quickly because I know time is a big issue. I'm a slow reader, so. Um, I think that did help. Um, CARS did end up being my lowest score on test day. Psych Soch, I think I did a lot of practice of that too the last week, tried to look through terms and stuff to get all of that down. And then, yeah, the official guide questions, which are from this book, um, you can get them in online form with this pack that I bought. So I did those online just because the test is online or on a computer, it'd be better to practice that way. So. That was a good way for me to practice. It's um, kind of like a half length test almost if you do all of those. So that was a good kind of final practice for me in those final days. And then the Friday before the exam, people recommend you should not do any studying. I was really stressed about it. So I didn't do any problems, um, but I did flashcards and I kind of leafed through notes. Hopefully this helps somebody. I know I watched a lot of videos like this while I was um, prepping just to get tips from other people and could kind of relax a little bit while still doing something kind of productive by watching tips from others. So hopefully this helps somebody. I know, like I said, study methods are different for everyone. Um, do whatever works for you. Do what feels right for you. I think that's the biggest thing. Listen to yourself and how you're learning and do what works best. So yeah, if you have any questions, um, let me know. I'd be happy to answer them. So yeah, thank you for watching and bye.